Hello comrades, and if you're here for the vlog of the Dutch time attack in Zandvoort where I took out the GT86 and 570S, I kinda have to disappoint you. There, I still gonna talk about what happened on that day, but unfortunately, well, disclaimer, it comes down to two things. First of all, Zandvoort is known for, well, being near the sea, and places that are near the sea are very windy, and I was not prepared for that, having my phone with no external microphone, so that would be kind of sucky content with a lot of wind noise. I could have still worked around it, but the most important thing what happened was between 1 and 6, it was pre pretty much unlimited track time, I was driving with two cars, with GT86 and then swapping for 570S and doing that all the time, all the time, all the time, so I barely had time to film. In fact, I was so exhausted after a couple of hours of non-stop tracking that I even took a nap in the 570S. Really, because I understood I would end up in a barrier if I continued doing that, so there was definitely no time or emotion or energy left for me like, Hello comrades, and this and this and that, and we have here amazing cars. Uh, so, sorry for that. So, uh, but bad things lead to good things I learned from my mistakes and I can tell you that the next time I will make sure that I will have additional cameraman with me and filming this everything whenever I will have such an event that I will need to drive and present to you what's happening while well, vlogging that kind of stuff so there's going to be that however I will absolutely sure still tell you what happened on that day I still have some material that I'll be able to show you I have Tons of pictures, especially thanks to Daniel Dilla, who made amazing shots during that day. So I will tell you about that. So please stick with me if you want to hear about my experience about the cars. Check out some cool shots. And, well, just in general, because you're, you're a sub and you like me, right? You do? You do? You do? You do? Thank you. So the day started on 19th of March. 2017 in Zandvoort in the NH Hotel. Good morning, cars. Good morning, racetrack. Good morning, comrades. And the first thing I wanted to do at 8 o'clock in the morning before leaving is to show you what exactly happened the night before when I totaled, crashed the 570S against the speed bump. But first, before we start with the day, I want to explain you what happened yesterday, how I got this. Which really pissed me off, because it's a four-star hotel, okay? So I presume they would have, well, super car friendly parking. Yes, I'm a freaking crap at least by now, by complaining about this and that, seriously. But no, I mean, the speed bump didn't look this high when I approached it at midnight, overnight, but you can clearly see here exactly what the issue is. There's like additional set of stones that is coming out higher after the speed bump which kind of damaged the front splitter or front bumper however you want to refer to it so yeah this kind of made me upset the second thing that i want to mention i sent it obviously to robert and he said you know th those things can happen don't worry about it and that's a huge thumbs up for him because i experienced also cases where some employers would let uh, their employees pay for the shitbox damage which was their company car when but yeah let's not talk about that uh having said that though huge thumbs up to robert not only for being cool about it but most importantly giving me the car the cars and having well uh, letting me have fun here as far as uh, possible concerning the weather while he is still at apex handing out cars to the customers to drive on the track this is like a huge shout out and Speaking about having fun on the track though, because of this weather, and it's kind of competition, it's time attack, this, that, this, that. But, but my philosophy regarding track driving, and that's what I say to everyone on the Nürburgring who come driving there, and especially if they ask, what's the fastest time you've driven? I say, guys, you cannot impress anybody here or even on the internet or whatever, but you can make everybody laugh, that means, if you crash obviously and having said that I'm not gonna push it today that wasn't my intention either especially with this car because I can win a trophy a cup yes and some likes on Facebook but I can lose a lot more if you know what I mean I hope you understand me I hope you agree with me because again it goes the same for you unless you're a paid professional driver which is like really your job to drive earn money earn sponsorships 
and make a living out of it, then I can understand that you're gonna go like bananas, balls out. But in this case, my advice to you as well, whenever you're gonna do track driving, if there is nothing on the stake, there is more on the stake from your side. So having said that, we're gonna continue. We're gonna go to the technical commission first, get our cars checked up and get the day started. And after that, yeah, we continued our way to the track and we arrived. Welcome race fans and oh my god, it's a tuned multiplier. Okay, we can go home now, I've seen it all. And it was really wet, it was very cold. There's only one thing you can do with such a weather. Oh, the enige echte. And uh, I only slept four hours because uh, we had a long journey behind us the night before. I had a lot of stuff to do when we came back to the hotel. Initially the idea was that I would be going drag racing with 570S. Unfortunately it was raining and doing drag races in the rain is just as useless as going sunbathing at night. Probably, if I may say so. So I decided first of all not to do that because, uh, well, it's useless and second of all I had other things to do, namely to participate with the briefing. Participate with technical checkups with the cars. So the technical checkup is done with the matching numbers and the banner and now it's time to hit the track but before we're gonna do any impressive track driving we're gonna do a small photo shoot for the time attack and some say he likes Ladas but today he's driving McLaren but all we know he's called the steak this is Robert's helmet that he landed me because because mine is still a train garage but yeah let's forget about that let's have fun today some nice cars have joined us for the photo session very crazy Evo with lots of aero and on my right is Sander, my old rival when I also used to have the Super Impreza coupe. Shortly after the photo session there was a possibility to go out on a track apart from uh, like the sessions that you have paid for as a participant you could also book additional 20 minute session for 30 euros. And this is really cheap, because 30 euros you can only get to do one lap, well only one 21 kilometers lap of the Nürburgring or the Neuschleife, and in this case it was 24 minutes and you could do like 10 laps, depending on your speed, well let's say 9 laps in that session, which was a steal. So I opted for that and I went out with the GT86. And the first practice session, almost ready to go. Because... I didn't have any experience with the car on the track at all or also I didn't have experience with the car at all after the tune that means after the um, after the engine mapping on the dyno because the car was taken by Trevor um, Robert's brother and I was driving the 570S straight after the dyno session to Zandvoort and I thought it would be a good possibility to check out how the car is so now comes my experience with the car what do I have to say with that First of all, let's start with the best part, the suspension. My god, this thing is fucking amazing. Seriously, Jersey suspension and not because they're friends of mine or something, but Zandvoort is a very technical part. Zandvoort, you can also compare it, a lot of people call it, I also call it like the mini Nürburgring. A lot of elevation changes and also a lot of bumps, a lot of curves that you need to attack with your car and that kind of unsettles the car. And sometimes it happened that you go over the curb at 180 kilometers an hour and that, well, if that goes wrong, if you have a shitty suspension, you're gonna have a bad time, kids. You're gonna have a bad time. Not in this case. I was able to go like really top speed above 150, 160, 180 kilometers an hour over curb stones. And guess what? I'm still alive. The car is in one piece. It is doing an amazing job. Seriously. So... I cannot wait to get this car out this Sunday on the track and well because I am now confident that this car will perform suspension wise on the Nürburgring by doing the way it should be doing because damn well if you don't believe me come over here rent this car out on the Nürburgring for, uh, from us. If you say suspension is shit I'm gonna give you money back seriously. Then moving on to the engine tuning or the should I say the ECU tuning. Nothing to say about that, well 15% uh, performance increment which is good, uh, you do feel it, 
it, it's great. There is an amazing function of auto rev matching when you downshift. So you brake and it only works when you put more than 40% of brake power and then downshift and then the car rev matches automatically and then you can well put the right gear and uh, be not afraid that your wheels will lock because you do not rev match and so on and so on, which is great. It, it works perfectly. One thing that was really, really, uh, well, upsetting, <laughs> if I may refer to the puns, uh, disappointing, that, that's a proper word. So, like I showed you in the review of this car, this car is equipped with a lap timer. So let me show you, start the engine, and this amazing little screen over here, it shows it already, lap timer. You can also go through other settings, but lap timer, you do a stopwatch, and then you can see well, it shows nine minutes. There's no way I did a nine minute lap. The problem with that is you need to press to the right. You can see it over here, apparently, to, well, to say that you did a lap. And then you have to do it all the time, automatically press the start stop button, which doesn't make freaking sense. I mean, the car is equipped with amazing GPS system. Why can't you have the automatic like lap timer to show that, hey, you're on a track, uh, you are you have passed this point again after doing a lap let me start counting maybe I didn't check the like the owner's manual how to work it properly and even if I didn't this is the most convenient thing to do this thing so kind of a bummer so but anyway while doing it manually uh, I saw that I did 2 minutes 16 and after that, in the timed session, I did 2 minutes 15. And then I realized I'm 5 seconds off the fastest guy. And I realized, well, there are two things I can do. I can either say the car has stock tires, the car has stock brakes, the car has no spoiler. So thereby the car is completely different from the other competitors field. And thereby I am in a huge disadvantage. But it's amazing to test the car out on suspension on suspension and everything. So the car is not good. So that it has no use to drive. The second thing I could say, and I kind of do agree, I'm a shitty driver. Well, I'm not the shittiest driver out there. But the fact is, Zandvoort is a very technical track. And I have very little experience there. And it is possible, probably, most certainly, to take off five seconds only by knowing how to drive the track. But for that, you need an instructor, the guy who knows how the track looks like. And that I didn't obviously have on that time. So I understood either the car is not good or I'm not good, probably both. So it has no use to lap this car. So for the next time, I will most certainly be back with this car on Zandvoort and other tracks as well. But I would take a track day, take an instructor to lap Zandvoort to understand how it works, where to brake, what's the ideal line, and so on and so on. And the car will also receive the important upgrades. It will get the big brake kit, it will get the wider tires, it will get downforce, it will get also seats, limited slip differential, the car will be slightly faster because of the shorter final drive ratio. So there'll be a lot of mods, and most importantly, I well, my track knowledge and track experience will be improved for in the future. But having said that, I understood it has no use to continue like that only by, you know, uh, spending fuels. It had no use, so I decided to focus only on the McLaren from then on. So let me tell you about that. You know, uh, some miscalculations can have very bad consequences. Luckily, in this case, it's not about too high entry corner speed or something, but I'm a bit low on fuel, so, um... The McLaren 570S, and my god, what an amazing, breathtaking car. At some points, I was having, uh, I don't want to sound cliche, you know, but it, maybe it wasn't like tunnel vision, but the engine roaring in the back and you strapped in the seat and just going 200 kilometers an hour over the corner uh, it was just you cannot describe it short info about the car the car is freaking amazing it has enough power it has great traction it has great stability but there are some things that mm -hmm -hmm. first of all and i am not the first one to say it aerodynamics it's great when you don't need it it's shit when you need it and i'm referring to this point i mentioned it earlier in previous vlogs and again other people other owners have mentioned as well there is no aerodynamics on the back there is a small ducktail which is 
beautiful and it probably adds some stability up to 120 kilometers an hour but above that or if you need to really go attack a corner where you really need the downforce it's not there and between 120 and 200 kilometers it's a minus because it does not offer you additional grip and you cannot go faster with the confidence above 200 kilometers an hour it's really dangerous because the car is just everywhere Luckily, this wasn't the case on the track, but it can be the case on the Autobahn. And if you're doing 200 plus, which is not uncommon with such a car, and there's suddenly someone in front of you who decides to switch lanes, you're going to have a bad time. So having said that, downforce was a major downside. Second problem which I had with this car is I only had it for like, what, one day? I never have driven it before on a track. Robert didn't explain to me exactly how the car works. So my assumption was put it in a track mode and then the car will have dynamic ESC mode, meaning that it will not, uh, well, start breaking the car down whenever it's slipping or whatever not. Apparently it's not the case. You need to fiddle with ESC buttons. But since multiple factors, again, not experience with the car, not enough track knowledge, and the car is too expensive and it's not worth it to risk the car for only like one uh, yeah, 10 euro cup and having a fame on uh, some some likes on uh, Facebook. It's not worth it to fiddle with EC uh, settings if you don't know what you're doing. So what it resulted is that I experienced that even on the straights, the car was accelerating faster in the third gear than it was doing in the second gear. I'm like, what the hell is happening here? Is this a torque limiter from the engine management, from the ECU, from the engine? But no, apparently the car was breaking itself down on the straights even. And then at the end of the day, I had a nice warning light, your brake pads are gone. And I'm like, what is this? So this was kind of... Hmm, hmm, hmm interesting experience but long story short i was participating in a supercar class with this car together with dimitri in the atomic gtr and also camaro and the uh, tuned 800 horsepower audi rs7 i did two minutes zero zero seconds and eight milliseconds in the finals dimitri went one minutes 57 so three seconds faster than i did and the other guys were behind us so for me it was good enough for a second place in second place misha sheridan <laughs> and the winner <laughs> from russia with the gtr dimitri rizak Just like with the case of the G86, the car is capable of going a lot faster than that. And the, the two things, you either improve the stability, or you turn off the ESC, put it in dynamic mode like I should have done, but I didn't know how. And the most important part is, of course, my personal fault or, well, my limitations is that I don't know the track that well. So in the future, I can guarantee you that only by having a track day and having some instructions, I will go sub two minutes easily. Well, that's like at least the benchmark. And even putting it on stickier tires, because right now I just had P0, which Robert even says is just a winter tire instead of uh, Trofeo R semi slicks or even Michelin Cup 2s. But Trofeo's R's would be a lot better choice than this car. So... Next time, sub two, easy. Well, uh, what else can I say? I was very satisfied with the result that I was able to get a second place. And I was also very happy for Dimitri for getting the first place. So we're kind of, you know, woo, team, we dominate. And uh, nah, we celebrated later with some spare ribs. So there's a food shot coming in later as a tradition, of course, because otherwise some people are going to complain. So at the end of this uh, vlog or explanation, there's going to be a food shot. It was an amazing day and I hope you still enjoyed my explanation of the day, but most importantly, what I think of the cars and where we're going to improve the cars and so on and so on and so on and so on. So I will be back. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or even suggestions or tips, make sure to uh, let me know. I'm very always happy to, to listen to your feedback. Uh, but for now, I hope you're going to have a good day and see you tomorrow at Nürburgring again and with another vlog vlog. So not, not this, this. So see you guys.